Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vera. I'm an analyst at Dev2Dev. We help developers analyze their games and improve behavior and financial metrics. And one of the most important metrics that we work with is lifetime value. And today I would like to share my experience in lifetime value calculation with you. But let's start from the description. Uh, LTV or uh, lifetime value or CLV, customer lifetime value, it's a revenue that average user bring to the project during his lifetime. Um, and connection between lifetime value and revenue is very close before, because if we know how much money we get from one user, we can assume how much revenue we will get from 1,000 of users or any other amount of users. And lifetime value is often used for traffic analysis. It's important that uh, users should bring uh, to the project revenue that necessarily should be more than attraction costs. And it's considered that uh, LTV should be greater than free customers, uh, customer acquisition costs. Uh, it tells us that the project is successful from a financial point of view. Uh, that's why it's very important for segment LTV by different traffic sources to define most profitable sources and get rid of uh, useless sources. So let's talk about ways of calculating lifetime value. Actually, it's not so uh, easy because this metric is about future, about future spendings. And we should calculate it right now, but we don't know how users will behave in the app, how will they pay. So we need to make some forecast of this metric. And now I'm going to tell you about several ways that we used in our company for calculating LTV. First way, it's ideal method. Actually, we didn't use it, but this method gets us uh, a real value of uh, lifetime. So how to do that? You can close registration. It's uh, very simple, but it's um, an unreal method because uh, nobody wants to close the project. Uh, so another way is to select a cohort of users until all users stop using the app. And after that, after, uh, uh, after they do it, uh, we can just divide total revenue by total audience. And that will be our uh, lifetime value. Uh, advantage of this method is that we get a uh, real lifetime value. So it's not a forecast, it's a fact value. Uh, so we can use it and mm, uh, apply to different, uh, analyze it uh, for different cohorts. But disadvantages make this approach useless uh, because uh, at first we need to wait for a really long time while users stop using the app. It could be one month or half a year because uh, users d uh, behave differently so we can uh, wait for a really long time. And uh, another disadvantages are that while we were waiting uh, uh, this uh, uh, users in activity, we can make some changes in the app, we, uh, launch some experiments, or in external factors can influence on users' behavior. Like, uh, for example, if our product will be published on iTunes or Google Play homepage, it will uh, increase our audience, but it was a uh, start using our app. That's why we can't apply this uh, lifetime value calculated for the old cohort to these new users, which completely different. Uh, that's why its method is useless, and we have two more methods, both of them calculated by the same formula, like daily ARPU or multiplied by lifetime. Uh, and the difference uh, between these methods in lifetime calculation. But let's start from daily ARPU. Uh, how to calculate it? You just need to uh, take a revenue for a specific day and divide by uh, audience active users at that day. And that will be our uh, ARPU. What about lifetime? Uh, one way to calculate it is um, make um, expert estimation. For example, if developer know his project well, he can define that uh, if uh, user uh, were inactive for the last seven, for example, days, uh, we can uh, mark him as churn because probably he will not come back to the app. Uh, this period can be not only seven days, but any other period of time. It can be 14 days or even months. So period of which we, um, we will uh, mark users as churn. And after that, uh, we should uh, calculate lifetime value for these users. Li uh, I'm sorry, lifetime, not lifetime value. And lifetime, it's a difference between install date and date of last visit. So it's number of days that users spend in the app. 
And here is an example. Let's imagine that today is 17th of January. Uh, to calculate lifetime, we need to select users who were inactive for the last seven days. It means that their last activity day is 10th of January. And after that, for each user, we need to calculate his uh, lifetime. So difference between these two days, uh, last activity date and uh, install date. That will be lifetime value of uh, specific users. And then we need to find the average value of all of these uh, lifetimes. That will be our lifetime, which we can use in formula to calculate uh, lifetime value. Uh, advantage of this approach is that it's really easy. You can use just Microsoft Excel and some basic data like sessions and payments, and you can calculate it without any developers by yourself. But disadvantages are that we use only one value of daily ARPU, but it could change for each user during some time. And the second disadvantage is about lifetime, because we need to make some addition which can be not very accurate. Uh, we can assume that a uh, user uh, uh, will not uh, come back to the app, but really he uh, come back in a month, for example. But he, uh, we already marked him as charmed, and that will be our mistake. So it's not very accurate. And that's why we have one more uh, way, one more approach to calculate lifetime. Uh, I think you know that a lifetime is an integral of retention or uh, area under retention curve. Uh, to make this calculation uh, easier, we can uh, replace uh, integral to a sum of retention values. So we can just uh, sum up all the retention values for each day, and that will be integral uh, of retention and uh, our lifetime. Uh, how to calculate it? Uh, to make this calculation, we need to know uh, several retention values. For example, retention on the first day, on seventh, fourteenth. Then we need to find mathematical function which will describe retention curve more accurate. Uh, here you can see on this example uh, in the legend of this chart. Uh, in our company, we tried uh, several functions to find the better which of these functions will describe uh, will get us uh, closer values to original. So after you define this function. Uh, you need uh, to use Solver, Microsoft Excel, or Google Spreadsheet. And using all of this data, you can extend this line for a longer period of time. Uh, why do we need to do that? Uh, because usually we know retention for a short period of time, for example, for months. And calculate lifetime uh, for uh, this short period is useless. So uh, we need to know retention for longer period of time to sum up all of these values. So we need to make a forecast of retention. And again, uh, using Solver, uh, several retention values and uh, mathematical functions, we can prolongate this curve for a longer time, for example, for uh, half a year. And common question here is uh, how to, uh, for how many days to prolongate this retention curve. And uh, uh, there are two approaches how to define uh, uh, the moment where, where to stop. Uh, first approach is to uh, again make an expert estimation. For example, if you know that your users spend, uh, don't spend more than two months in your app, uh, it makes no sense to prolongate this function for a year. Uh, because lifetime of your users is uh, much uh, smaller. Uh, another approach is to find the point when this curve stopped to change, retention value stopped to change, and this curve became like a horizontal line. Uh, the, um, uh, each day you have uh, the same retention values. Um, it's a signal to stop uh, extending this line. And after that, when you uh, create a forecast of retention, you can uh, sum up all values, as I told before, and uh, that will be lifetime of uh, your users. Disadvantage of this method are uh, the same as uh, is the same as the previous one. So we use only uh, one value of ARPU, uh, which can change. But advantage is that uh, we we get additional uh, retention forecast, which can uh, also be used for our experiments, user analysis, and, and any other activities. 
And now I would like to say a couple of words about uh, calculation LTV for products with subscription. Actually, LTV meaning here stays the same. It's still a revenue that average subscriber brings to the project. But uh, lifetime and chore uh, dis um, description uh, became a little bit different. Uh, recently, we told that lifetime is the difference between install date and date of uh, last visit. But here, lifetime is the number of subscription periods. So if users bought free subscription, free monthly sale, his lifetime is free. Uh, what about chore? Again, um, previously, we need to make um, uh, some expert estimation where to uh, mark user as churn and we use uh, days of inactivity. But here we surely know that if user didn't prolong his subscription, we can mark his as churn because he decided to, uh, to not use the app further. And here you can see several formulas how to calculate lifetime value for subscriptions. Uh, let's start from the last one. Uh, lifetime value is subscription price multiplied by lifetime. Uh, you can see that this formula looks like the previous one, like uh, when we daily RPU multiplied by lifetime. But here uh, we know subs uh, RPU uh, can uh, be different for users and for um, different periods of time. But subscription price usually don't change. Uh, only if you make some experiments, it could change. So uh, these uh, factors make this uh, uh, calculation more accurate because um, these, um, uh, these digits usually uh, don't change. So, and problem here in this formula, again, in lifetime calculation. And here we can see three formulas how uh, we can calculate lifetime for subscribers. Uh, first one is the deal method that we discussed uh, before. Uh, we need to wait while users stop prolongate uh, their subscriptions and then divide uh, number of subscriptions to number of subscribers. That will be lifetime, but again, we should wait for a really long time to calculate this uh, lifetime th by this way. Uh, the next formula is very popular. You, you can face uh, with it in the internet. It's one divided by churn rate. But if we, see, uh, if we look at the example on the left side, we can see um, that, uh, for example, if you have 100 subscribers on the first period, uh, then 70 subscribers on the second one. So it means that we lose uh, 30 subscribers. And to calculate churn rate, we just need uh, to divide 30 subscribers on 100 subscribers on the first period. That will be churn rate of the first period. And here we can see that uh, churn rate of uh, any, uh, each of these periods are uh, different. And the reasonable question here is what, uh, which of these churn rate is to use in this formula. Uh, actually, whatever rate we use, this uh, calculation will not be accurate. That's why we have one more formula, it's third, uh, where we can, it looks scary, but actually it's easy. Here we need to uh, use short-term churn rate, it could be churn rate of the first period, then long-term churn rate, it could be churn rate of the last period you know. In this example, it could be uh, churn rate of the sixth period. And that's it, only two values, and you can uh, calculate um, a lifetime time using this formula and it will be more accurate than uh, a late, uh, lifetime calculated by um, two uh, previous formulas. And what is important uh, here uh, when we calculate lifetime for, uh, for products with subscription? Uh, usually uh, in such kind of products, there are several subscription plans. And it's very important to uh, compare lifetime value for each of these plans. For example, uh, subscription price uh, usually uh, is, is known for us. Also, we can uh, calculate lifetime and lifetime value for each plan and then define which uh, of uh, all plans bring us uh, more revenue. And after that, after we define the most profitable plan, we can highlight it and push users by it. And also it's very important if you have unlimited plan in your app, because uh, usually it's one-time purchase that gives unlimited access uh, to the app. Um, and um, it's really important to understand what is more product, uh, to let users pay once or push them, make uh, uh, small, uh, small payments, but regularly. Uh, that's why LTV can be helpful here. 
So that's it about calculations. Uh, and now I would like to say a couple of words about how to optimize lifetime value. Uh, actually, it's a complicated formula which includes uh, several metrics like retention, pain share, RPU, RPPU. And uh, to uh, increase lifetime value, it's better to work with all of these metrics. If you improve them step by step, it will influence on uh, lifetime value. So I'm sure that you know how to work with all of these metrics. Uh, that's why it's, uh, it's a better way how to uh, work with lifetime value. And that's it. If you have Great, thank you very much for that. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to take this uh, opportunity to just check if there's any questions. Anyone got any questions out there? Looks like you're, you've captivated them so much. I mean, I, I honestly think this is an amazingly difficult area because it <laughs> seems so easy. Here's a bunch of clients. They're going to spend this much money. Surely we can predict it. And yeah. it's obviously not that easy. Um, but, you know, in terms of, like, there's obviously these very different methods, and some of them are involved a lot more, much more yeah. complication. Um, do you, have you found any kind of rules of thumb that have emerged in terms of, you know, like ways of getting to a kind of a number easily? Or is it always worth going down to the, the actual maths? Uh, actually, I described several ways how to calculate lifetime that uh, are really not very hard. It's not <laughs> really complicated. It, it could make uh, any person. But now machine learning is uh, developing in this area, and it's really a mess, yeah. and it's very complicated. That's why uh, developers hire specific uh, people to, to do that. But this yeah. calculation really is there. To be fair, I think you're right. I mean, I mean I've tended to go for like 90 days as kind of a predicted kind of retention yeah. drop-off point. And, and because the numbers are often so low after 90 day uh, for a lot of games, it's a rule of thumb. It's a, kind of a nice, easy way to have a very immediate number if somebody's asking you today. But I think you're right. These, this process is so much better, so I'm going <laughs> to steal some of that. Yeah. Uh, and on that note, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.